But uh, yeah, so kind of to talk about what's going on next week too. Um, I can I guess in the next couple of days, it's nice to see that the NFC South is getting some prime time love. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I, I guess it's arguable arguable that we are the worst division and I guess our records do kind of show it but I think it makes up for some interesting football guys yes we bring the entertainment you well, never know who's gonna be on top <laughs> minus this season honestly like we're a very competitive division and yes. like I, I know it's been called the NFC beast and stuff like that but in all actuality this is the first season that I've seen in a long time where the NFC East has actually been that competitive like it's been in yep. For the most part, it's been blowout and stuff, so I let them have their shine. But our our division, for the most part, minus the Saints dominating us for like the last how many years, has been pretty close actually. And it's not uncommon for at least two teams to go into the wild card um, of the NFC. So yeah, it, it's nice to see. I, I know the Falcons are playing the the Panthers, which not a bad uh, prime time slot. Uh, I know that you know you guys just had one too on the Monday with the Ravens and the Saints, mm-hmm. so that's nice too. But um, I, you know, I looked at the schedule and it's kind of insane to think about, like, there isn't a lot of NFC South primetime, like matches this year. Yeah. Why, why do you think that is? Like, that's kind of weird. A lot of, uh, the a- AFC, um, what was it? The AFC West with the, the Broncos, the Chiefs. Yeah. The, uh, I think that's what drove most of, uh, of, of it away. It's because it's like any advertising thing, and I and, and anybody should, out there will kind of eventually know this too. Is like it goes, what do the people want? For two years ago, is they wanted Brady and the Buccaneers. So you're gonna get Brady and the Buccaneers like seven mm. times in prime time. Last year, what Stafford went to the Rams? Oh yeah, yeah. you did Russell Wilson to the Broncos. Oh yeah, here we go. Like Monday, right. Sunday, or like yeah, that's and then it was like. Uh, uh, Devonte Adams to the Raiders, like that also changes it. So whatever it'll probably be next year, it'll be, instead of just being one team, it'll be, uh, all of the rookie quarterbacks that get drafted, like in the first round or that start kind of thing nice. for their new teams. Those will be the ones that become primetime games. Like it'll be like Carolina versus Seattle, just so they can have their two quarterbacks play each other. Like that. And, you know what? Game. Maybe mm-hmm. not. Okay, so kind of to okay. touch on that too, actually, funny enough, I would have said at the beginning of the season that it would have been a no-brainer that Seattle was going for their number one quarterback. Like, I, I thousand percent. I'm not entirely convinced that that's still going to happen. That they're like, not going for the quarterback? I don't think so. Hmm. I don't think so. You think they're going to know? They might, man. Honestly, the way I look at it is, like, I, I think of some of these wins, I'll even say it with the Falcons, like a lot of the wins have been luck, especially with Mariota. But that's I don't think that's the case for Seattle. I think Geno's actually been playing very well. And he's definitely proven a case to say, you know what, maybe I do like I'm I deserve to be paid for more he's than my one year contracts. Number sign eight overall like a, pick before too. So yeah, mm. sign me to like a three or four year contract in Seattle. And if you want to go quarterback maybe in the second round, do it and we can play tandem. Wow. Honestly. Why, like, I think out of all the quarterbacks that have just, like, started on a team, Mariota, Gino Smith taking the role, you know, Trubisky trying for it and stuff like that, I think Gino Smith proves the best case that he deserves a contract. I'm just saying. So Gino Smith gets a three- to four-year contract, and then when he inevitably starts coming down a little bit, that's when Seattle is ready for Arch Manning. I was, I was thinking that funny. Oh, enough. my God. Yeah. And you know what? I was actually, you know, we were talking about Tom Brady's protege. And mm-hmm. I know, uh, I'm going to look in the comments because I know that, uh, what's your name? Kate was saying about Tom Brady. I can uh-huh. find it. Okay, maybe not. But she said she made a comment saying that Tom Brady just needs time, essentially, right? If you're asking me. Who the next there it is, from. Yeah, I was um, just gonna say it. Who I think the next big quarterback is gonna be that probably could beat Tom Brady's record, it's gonna be Arch Manning. Ooh, I'm I'm pretty okay. confident on that. Um, he is like he's showing already at early glances, you know, even if in high school, that he's gonna be better than Peyton and Eli, and that's scary. That's very, very scary. So I, where, I like the I like that and Patrick. Like Mahomes, so like I, I, I think Patrick Mahomes, if he stays with uh, Andy Reid and just that like scheme that he's in for like seven years, 
Just the way that he pops off like 5,200 yards a season. You know what I mean? For like seven years straight, it'd be like, oh, all of a sudden he just needs four more years and he catches Brady. Like, what happened? I'm going to make a bold prediction actually about that. Um, I actually think that Patrick Mahomes will get traded from the Kansas City Chiefs. And I'm going to tell you how it's going to happen. I can, I can, I'll play by play how it's going to happen. So, what's going to happen is I think Andy Reid. Is going to be, he's going to step down as head coach. He'll do something, whether he, you know, retires or he goes into more of like an upper management, similar to what happened with Bruce Arians. I think Casey is going to fall and they're going to have maybe one or two bad seasons. And then I think what's going to happen is they're going to preemptively trade Patrick Mahomes and he's going to go play for another team and he's going to win another Super Bowl. And I think he's going to stay with that team for a while. He can come over here. That's my prediction. <laughs> That's, I, you know what? Like, it, like anyone can go in the comment section and be like, that's dumb. He's going to stay with the Chiefs. And be like, well, did, did Brady stay with the Chiefs? Like, if I'm not mistaken, to all your 49er fans out there, too, your epic, you know, uh, Joe Montana actually bethrowed the Chiefs jersey for a little bit there at the end of his career as well. So, yeah. Uh, 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 oh, uh, did we also forget that Manning, uh, a.k.a. Peyton, didn't just wear the Colts jersey either? Yeah. So, nope. Yep. Actually, I, that is a good point because even with the QBs for over the 5,000 that I know um, Mr. Tom Brady beat Drew Brees for, I notice a lot of them have uh, two teams or more. Yeah. It's uh, the two team is, it's, I'll, I'll call it rare. It's not unheard of, but it's rare mm. for a QB to get two rings with two different teams. And that's the big thing. I think that's one of the big motivations, whether people want to come out and say it or not for Tom Brady, is that like nobody's went three teams and won a Super Bowl. It's it hasn't happened yet. But there's been um, a list of teams or quarterbacks that have one with two teams. So yeah, or just uh, any it, other player except quarterback, of course. Yeah, exactly. Like and, and it's funny because you know, actually, not to kind of dive too like off topic, but um you know, some quarterbacks' talent are wasted too, right, by staying on one team. And and that's the tough part too is, you know, I'll even say like even with the Oilers potentially with wasting Connor McDavid potentially, right, is, you know, I uh, it's it's a lot because, you know, you look at QBs like Matt Stafford, you know, how many like rings would he have if he didn't continue playing for Detroit? Hell, even if Matt Ryan wasn't continuously on the Falcons, if he was on another team in his prime, would he have had, you know, a ring, right? I would just say if they added a little bit more on the defensive side yeah, and maybe like, you know, when Roddy white decides to retire or go into free agency, replace him and still get Julio Jones and Roddy white type numbers. Like, well, no, for sure. But kind of more so what I'm leaning towards is, you know, for a team that maybe would have had all that and just needed, you know, a a quarterback with a good arm. Like there's a lot of these quarterbacks that could have done arguably a lot better than what they've done. If they kind of would have been like, you know what, I deserve more. I don't care what you're paying me necessarily right now. Because sure, yeah. money money does matter, absolutely. But mm-hmm. for a lot of players, legacy matters more than money, honestly. So, yeah, it, it's That's tough. That's why Brady I, took a pay cut every year. And to be honest with you, I think, and I might be stretching it a bit, I think that's what's going on with Lamar Jackson. If you're asking me what the whole root of him not signing it on it is, is he wants a ring and he doesn't want to stay with the team that he feels isn't rebuilding in the proper direction. So he might arguably look at teams like, for example, he listed, and I said this in the chat, where he wants to go with either Philadelphia, he wants to go to Miami, and he wants to go to Detroit. Those three teams right there are a quarterback away from winning it all. Jalen Hurts is balling out this season, don't get me wrong, but this is, you know, he didn't have a good last year. Like, Mm -hmm. Jalen Hurts Mm -hmm. is having a career year now because they rebuilt in the proper way, right? But... You plug Lamar Jackson into Miami, you plug him into Detroit, I'd, I'd watch out. Like, that's terrifying to think about. Especially so. especially in Detroit, knowing that they have Jamison Williams coming back. And that guy's, like, arguably going to be the fastest person in the in a NFL if, his, if the injury yeah. obviously comes back healthy and stuff like that. Lamar will be like, oh, crap, I got nowhere to run. Boo! Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to also say, for the prime time for NFC yeah. South, I d- – I am happy that we got to play in London and you guys are going to be playing in Germany. Yeah, we are going to be playing in Deutschland, yeah. And, (laughs) you know, those German fans of Tom Brady probably will get to, like, you know, my, you know, we'll have fun watching him. That's a fun fact. Yeah. 
Ja, NFC, AFC Super Bowl wegen so The Brady. We're playing the Seahawks. And I'm a little bit intimidated by Mr. Gino Smith. I'm not going to lie. I did big game for Mr. Tom Brady and all the rest of them. But honestly, just to have it in the big fatherland of Deutschland, it, it's be- wunderbar. Abs- mm. wunder- wunderbar to have this game here. Cannot wait until Sunday morning at 7.30. 7.30 in the damn morning, I have to wake up is just that, to watch my wait, books. You're nailing did I pick, that. Wow. Wait, is that happening this week? Da, da. Oh, yeah. okay, so I did. 7.30. Say <laughs> I know, that's, that's why I'm like, oh, that was good. That was good. Yeah, that was good. Thanks for watching. If you liked that clip, be sure to check out the other great content from the Let's Talk Football community. And as always, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when more great content like this becomes available.